pleasure we serve. How beautiful. How beautiful the hands that were nailed to a cross. How beautiful the feet. How beautiful our Savior that died for us and that loves us so very much. Stand and sing with us. You are so good to me. You are beautiful, beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. you poured out all your blood and I want every church member to close your eyes and I want you to listen to the youth as they sing and don't listen to the way they sing but you just close your eyes and you open your heart and you listen to the words that they say Would you bow with me, please, in prayer? Father God, you are beautiful. You're beautiful to our eyes. You're beautiful to our ears. You're beautiful to our hearts. You are so beautiful. Great is your love. Great is your grace. Great is your mercy to us. We are so blessed. And we're here today, Father, because you are beautiful. We're here today to worship you in spirit and in truth, in the beauty of worship, 
May our hearts well up within us and give you praise and majesty and glory and honor now and forever until Jesus comes again. And then we'll have eternity, Lord, to really sing how beautiful you are to us. Help us to know that you've placed a song within our hearts. Help us to let it out today in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen, amen. Well, good morning. It is so good to see you this morning and to be in the house of the Lord together. Uh, Brother Frank Hutchins has an announcement to make, and as he comes, we just want to welcome our visitors. We have quite a few with us this morning, and we are so glad that you chose to come and be with us today. We pray God's blessings upon you, and we pray that you'll enjoy this time of worship today with us here at Rocky Hill. I'd like to uh, call your attention to the upcoming event next Sunday after worship service. We're going to honor our pastors, Brother Henry and Brother Lee, with a covered dish lunch. And uh, just want to uh, make sure the church knew that everyone is invited. And uh, uh, I thought of some scripture uh, concerning maybe this occasion. And... Uh, the, our Lord uh, told Peter, said, if you love me, feed my lambs and sheep. And uh, as I, you know, I've heard that scripture many times before. But this time I think, so we got lambs, you know, that's our children. We got sheep, which is us. So, uh, you know, it, we've got two men that have been called out to, to uh, feed and shepherd this flock. And uh, we love and respect them very deeply uh, because of their genuine, genuine commitment to do this and God's provision to us through them and it may be something that we take for granted or I take for granted and so in regard to <clears throat> our Lord and uh, our appreciation to them we'd like to share a meal with them next Sunday after worship service so just want to make sure that everyone was uh, you know if you didn't have it on your schedule but everyone is invited just bring a covered dish and we will have some baskets over uh, in the educational building for gifts or cards or whatever. But uh, we take our pastors, we take everyone for granted, it seems like, that has work to do in the church. And so we want to especially honor them next Sunday morning. Thank you, Frank. At this time, I'm going to ask the children to come, if they would, and join Wyatt Smith. For children's church. Always a treat when Wyatt does children's church. <laughs> I've asked Jerry to come up and help me with this lesson. How you doing this morning, children? And not so children? Today's lesson is all about trust, and I have two gifts for two of you. Um, and I'm going to give two of you the opportunity to choose. I see you looking at me. I know you want to, but okay. Who wants to choose first? Wow. Okay. Which one do you want? This one? Okay. Okay, now who wants the other one? You want it? Give it to him, Jerry. Now, if you will open them up. Yeah, there's tape on it. Keep you from seeing in there. It, just give it to him. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Ya, jika nyindirnya. <laughs> you got candy, didn't you? It's all that trust, isn't it? That bag may have looked appealing, but what's on the inside wasn't a tr- sweet treat as you thought, but it was onions are good. <laughs> and inside of your bag was a sweet treat, Jolly Ranchers, and I'm going to give one out to all of you if that's okay. And you get to keep the rest of the bag. Yes, you are, Jerry. Yes, you may be excused. Now, I got, I got this lesson from, uh, from uh, him sitting over here. He did it to me, and of course I picked the onion. That's just uh, what happens. Everyone take one, one, Jenna. If I see you take two, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you're not getting no more. You take one. You want one? There you go. Just take one. Okay, here you go. And you get the whole rest of the bag. And you didn't think I was going to let you keep that onion, did you? So, this bag right here, it may have looked appealing, like many things in life, but it turned out to be a bad thing. Well, onions are good, but I mean, it wasn't what you expected. And yours may have looked bad on the outside, but it turned out to be some good candy. The moral of the story is, don't trust appearances. That's it. I'm going to pray now. <laughs> Lord, thank you for this day that we can come worship you. A blessing live in this country, we can worship you freely. Just bless these children here today and help them to go through life as you see fit, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
take just an opportunity before we receive our offering to give you an opportunity to greet one another and welcome our visitors. So let's greet each other and, and tell each other he keeps me singing. You just never know what's going to happen around here. You never know. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for this day that you've given us, for truly this is the day that you have made. And Father, we're going to rejoice and praise you and thank you and worship you in this day. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to gather together in your house to worship you, to sing praises to your name, to hear your word. And Father, I pray that everything that is said and done this morning, every thought of the heart, Father, every word that comes out of our mouths, Lord, everything that is done in this place today will bring honor and glory to the name of Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords who we worship today. Father, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. I thank you, Lord, for all of your blessings. You have been so good to us. And, Father, we just want to thank you for all that you've done for us. Father, as we enter into the remainder of this service, Father, I pray that your anointing would rest upon Pastor Henry as he comes to bring the word to us today. Father, let it be a life-changing word. And, Father, I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit would just stir our hearts today. And, Father, that we would respond as the Holy Spirit leads. And now, Lord, as we come to this time of worshiping you through our giving, Lord, I pray that it will truly be another part of our worship service in which we truly worship you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
And all God's children said, Amen. Aren't you grateful that you're never the same once Jesus comes into your life? He makes all the difference in the world. We're glad you're here this morning. We're especially glad to have our director of missions, uh, Brother Larry McCoy and his beautiful wife, Charlotte. Thank you for coming and being with us this morning. I see a lot of other guests and visitors, and we welcome you in the strong and powerful and beautiful name of Jesus Christ. I want to invite you to open God's Word with me this morning to the epistle of 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 15 in just a moment. 2 Peter chapter 1. In the first epistle of Peter to the believers in Christ, he deals with the problems on the outside of the church and shares with them how they can live a Christian life in such a way that will give them strength and walk close to the Lord and find the power in, in the strength of Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. Basically, in this second epistle, Peter deals with the problems and difficulties on the inside. One of the problems that they had was false teachers had come into the gathering and began to spread false doctrine and teaching. And so Peter wants to ground them in the faith once delivered unto the saints. And so that is the basis of his second epistle. And I want us to share together in the reading of God's Word this morning in chapter 1 of the second epistle of Peter, beginning in verse 1. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained or received like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as His divine power has given us all things that pertain to godliness, to life, through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgiven, forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For this reason I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth. Yes, I think it is right, and as long as I am in this tent or in this body, to stir up you up in reminding you of these things, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my passing from this life. Peter was so exercised. 